I'm Sharice LeClaire. The November elections are right around the corner and we want you to be informed. CBS3 Springfield, The Republican, MassLive.com and New England Public Radio have joined together to bring you a detailed look at the candidates running for public office. Now here's the Republican's Rob Rizzuto to introduce us to candidates running for office right here in Western Massachusetts. Hello and thank you for joining us for this edition of the 2014 Campaign Roundtable Series. I'm politics reporter Rob Rizzuto and today we're here with the candidates running to represent the 1st Hamden, Hampshire State Senate District. Uh, before we meet the candidates, I'd like to introduce you to our panel of journalists who will be helping us out today. We have from the Republicans editorial team Ron Chamellis and Jane Kaufman. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And to my left, we have the three candidates running to represent this very important district in the state Senate. Uh, first, we have Democrat Eric Lesser, we have Republican Deborah Bronski, and we have Independent Mike Franco. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, we will jump right into our first question here. Um, there's been a lot of criticism about the conditions of the roads and bridges in Massachusetts, particularly in Western Mass, um, and about the dire need for reconstruction. Um, you know, this has been touted as important not just for the condition of the roads, but for the jobs that it also brings when these projects kick off. Um, there's currently a repeal of um, a law that was passed pending via ballot question to uh, basically the gas tax is set to increase um, indexed along with the rate of inflation. The ballot question would repeal that. The argument against that has been this money is needed for road reconstruction, and the argument for it obviously has been, um, you know, there should be a vote every time you want to increase the taxes. So let's just say if you're elected and this gas repeal, the tax repeal passes, what will you do to uh, fight for this important road funding? Um, and just for this question, Eric, you could start with you. Great, Rob. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for having uh, having me. You know, quickly on the uh, issue of the gas tax repeal, I do not support uh, indexing the gas tax to inflation, so I'll be voting in favor of the repeal, and here's why. Uh, I don't think that that tax is fair to our middle class families in western Massachusetts. We drive more uh, than families in eastern Massachusetts, and when the price of gas <coughs> goes up, there's less public transportation alternatives for us. So what that means is, is an increase in the gas tax comes right out of the pockets of middle class families uh, who are already being pinched and squeezed uh, too much by our tax system. I think it's of course vital uh, to fund our bridge and road projects and I have a plan in place to do just that but the funding needs to be done in a fair way uh, in a way that's fair to Western Massachusetts. They're about to put a billion dollars into a four mile extension of the Green Line in Somerville when we struggle to get funding for basic road and bridge repair work right here in Western Massachusetts that would help an entire region. So my feeling on it is, is that the taxing needs to be fair uh, and needs to take into consideration the living habits of, the, of us here in Western Massachusetts. And my feeling is, is that the funding needs to be done in a fair way. Okay. Uh, Deb, on Thank this topic. You. Thank you. So I am against the automatic increase okay. in tax, just to uh, gas tax to be, to be clear on that. I believe that the state of Massachusetts has plenty of money. We're a rich state and we can fund the projects that we need. Just, what, three weeks ago, a six-foot slab of concrete fell from the 91 viaduct onto State Street. Thankfully, there were no cars or pedestrians there, but we are, um, as, as my opponent mentioned, we are in dire need of getting some things taken care of. In my own town of East Longmeadow, we have had a road on the list approved for repair for 18 years. 18 years. I was um, in Belchertown talking with their town manager. 16 years. And the cost for 16 years ago fixing a road is entirely different than today. It's, it's just an enormous amount. So I believe that by responsibly spending the tax dollars that we already collect and managing <coughs> the programs and services we have in place, we have plenty of money in Massachusetts to do the work that we need to do without additional resources. Gotcha. Okay, so both f uh, for the repeal of the gas tax and looking for legislative solutions to get that money here. Correct. Mike Franco, uh, what say you on this topic? <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, I too am for the repeal, so I'll personally vote yes on question one for this. Um, I, I believe that the, um, the when the legislature puts automatic mechanisms in place to determine tax rates and so forth, that that's uh, unconstitutional really and they really need to do their job each and every year and their votes should be 
transparent to the people so we can decide whether or not our representatives are doing what we want them to do. Um, secondly, uh, our roads should be uh, simple and safe. You know, um, the you know bridges and roads are complex, but we need to make them as simple and as safe as possible and reasonably priced. Uh, right now, uh, there was a, a, a report that was out that showed Massachusetts roads and bridges uh, at the one of the lower levels yeah. of safety. Yet we have some of the highest costs associated with. Um, a lot of folks, and what I read as well, say that it's, uh, it, it's administrative costs and so forth. So we need to do a better job lowering those costs and concentrating on the infrastructure because the, the people here who pay the taxes, we deserve safe roads, we deserve, deserve it for industry, for mm -hmm. commerce, and also for recreating as well. Gotcha. And all three candidates for the uh, repeal of yeah. the gas tax indexing. Thank you very much. <coughs> this kind of naturally segues us right into our next question when we're talking about uh, transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly public transportation. Um, everyone knows that um, you know you get out Boston way. You really don't need a car to live. You know, there's chances are you're going to have great public transportation. Um, that's not the case out here. Actually, you know, you get to Worcester and you go <coughs> west, and that's pretty much the end of that living situation, if you will. Um, so, just looking at the uh, regional transit authorities, um, I know the the PV the Pioneer Valley um, Transit Authority here is said that they are underfunded. They have limited routes. They only run certain hours. People can't get to their jobs if they have a late shift. Um, you know, as far as being a state senator, how important is it to you to work to get more money for the regional transit authorities, particularly those here in Western Mass, to as much as we can bridge the gap between public transportation in the east and west? Uh, and for this one, Mike, I, we'll start with you right down there. Uh, so, if I understand. Question correctly, you're, you're talking about rail from Springfield to Boston, or just the well, re that's regional the, well, regional transit authorities. But okay. you know, high speed rail uh, between Boston and Springfield <coughs> has something that's come up. You know, folks have mentioned right. it. Some people are okay. You know, that's part of their plan. But sure. Well, like uh, I said at one of the debates uh, with uh, with Eric and Deborah, um, the the high speed rail to me is uh, very expensive. Uh, can't really pay for itself. Um, the, the only rail systems that truly pay for themselves are the freight rail systems like CSX. Uh, so we have to be very careful when we're spending taxpayer dollars on uh, nostalgia, you know, on nice things that we dream about and so forth. And uh, uh, it's not that we shouldn't look at the issue and determine, you know, try to determine whether it's feasible for us. but. Uh, to put uh, a talented young man like Eric Lesser on a high-speed rail to Boston, I totally disagree with. Let's you know, let's keep him here um, and help help develop Western Massachusetts. Um, so if it can pay for itself in a private sector respect, I would be for it. All right, but we do have our issues here. Uh, we have industry here that we need to develop. Uh, potential uh, our our core competency is metalworking, precision tooling, and um, so forth. So let's let's see if that works for us. Let's try to keep it here, and um, and be careful with spending a lot of money uh, on a high speed rail system. Uh, what they're, about they're, the transit authority, the, tra the regional transit authority? Getting um, money for that is that something you consider a priority? Well, that that should be funded, obviously, and uh, people you know need to get around. And the less the less cars we have on the road, the better off we're going to be because there's less wear and tear to the roads and so forth. Um, and there's low, low income people who who can't afford to travel in their own means. So of course that's that's important. We should fund it. But when we fund transportation, we should make sure that the money goes to the right spot. If we say that we're giving money for roads and bridges, and by golly, let's do that. Let's not spread it out in other places mm -hmm. and so forth. If we're going to go with the uh, regional transit, then let's let's focus on that and give the money directly to that. They, they kind of get the money, and then they start spreading around in other places, and and that's where my trust starts to, to fall a little gotcha. bit. Okay, a little bit more tactful spending. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Deborah. Thank you topic. very much. Very mm -hmm. important topic. First, with regard to um, local transit, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that people have jobs and have responsibilities can get there, and and not everyone can afford a vehicle. And it's very important for for us to take care of the citizens in our in our cities and towns. And so, making sure that that access is available on a regular basis, so people can get to town, get to their jobs, um, get to the hospital if need be, these are all <coughs> important things. And and so, we should certainly fund that. I will go back to the fact that I believe we have the money and resources we need on a state level. We simply need to respend, spend responsibly and look at where we can reallocate some of our resources. Regarding high speed, 
It's a great idea. It's not a new idea by any means. It's been talked about for over 22 years. We have plans. Um, we've, we've met with, um, I've met with many of the, the many of the members of the Springfield City Council who were there initially when it was talked about and we know that it's being studied and there are grants for that. Um, and while it's not a new idea, it's still a good idea. I absolutely think that it's a good idea, but one that should not take priority as the next state senator. We have so many things that should be priority and high-speed rail isn't one of those. That six-foot piece of uh, cement that fell from the bio deck might, have be, might be one of those priorities. I think we should look at the resources we have right now. For example, the airport at Westover Air Reserve Base. We have a beautiful facility there that we could be working on bringing in freight and rail and all those resources to bring goods and services into Westover. It's a resource that we already have that we don't take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So rather than invest in something new, if we can look at what we have and make investments in bringing more business and more resources into what we have, um, I think we'd be in a better position. That's a renewed focus on the existing infrastructure that's there. Thank you. Okay. Um, and Eric, on this topic. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, Rob. You know, a rail link uh, between Boston and Springfield is something I've been talking about since the very beginning of this campaign. And Deb's right, it has been discussed for decades. Uh, what's stopping it from happening is the political will to make it happen. And we actually have a unique moment coming up. Uh, for the first time in a generation, the Senate president is going to be from Western Massachusetts, Stan Rosenberg. He supports me uh, in this race and my efforts to put forward uh, a rail link between Boston and Springfield. We've discussed the issue. I've also discussed the issue with Congressman Neal, who also supports me. We have a chance to combine state, local, and federal leadership for the first time in a very long time <coughs> to open up the possibility of a rail link. A few details about why it's achievable right now. The link already exists. Uh, Mike mentioned CSX. The line, the rail line already exists. Right now it's, uh, op it's a freight line that's operating on that line. A few years ago, the state of Massachusetts purchased the right-of-way between the Boston to Worcester section. There are now regular trains between Boston and Worcester, and anybody who's been to Worcester recently has seen that the downtown there is completely transformed. You have shops opening, you have apartments opening up, people moving downtown, spending time downtown. It's because <coughs> of the rail link. Uh, but as you mentioned, you know, they stopped the train in Worcester. Why did they stop the train in Worcester? They stopped the train in Worcester because it's the same thing we've always seen year after year, which is that Beacon Hill forgets that we exist uh, out here. They forget uh, that there's a great part of the state west of Worcester. If I'm there, that's going to change. I'm going to work with the Senate president. I'm going to work with our, co our congressmen and our federal delegation to move this forward because it is achievable. And you know, we can't afford not to make these changes. Of course we need to maintain and improve our existing infrastructure, but in the next 15 years, Rob, 28,000 people are going to move out of the greater Springfield area. This is a, from a study done by the UMass Donahue Institute. 28,000 people are going to leave our area in the next 15 years. We have got to reverse that, and the way we reverse that is by connecting ourselves to the growth we see all around us. We can't afford not to make these changes. Uh -huh. Three candidates and uh, you know three different stances on this. Everybody obviously sees the importance of uh, infrastructure funding, but thank you very much. You. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back in a few moments with more from the candidates.